Google Tasks is a basic yet integrated and free task management app that's included in both the free and paid Google Workspace suite of apps. And today I'm going to share how you can effectively use Google Tasks for both personal and business use so that you can stay on top of all your daily tasks. Okay, so before we get started with Google Tasks, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into task management using Google Tasks. Okay, so getting started, what we're first going to do is navigate through the web version of Google Tasks that integrates with your other Google apps. Then what we're going to do is dive into the mobile version that you can download on Android or iOS. Now, as you can see, I'm inside my Gmail account. Now to access Google Tasks, simply navigate over to the side panel and locate tasks. When you click on tasks, that's going to expand this option. And this is where you can manage all your tasks. And like I mentioned, you can simply access your Google Tasks across all your other Google apps inside your account, like Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, and more. Google Tasks is ideal if you're looking for a simple yet agile task management solution that seamlessly integrates with your other Google apps. And that's the main reason I like Google Tasks, because it has a dynamic interface integration with other Google apps. Okay, so to add a task, simply navigate up to Add a Task, then go ahead and add a title, then navigate down and add details about this task, and then navigate down to the date and time. So when do I want to complete this task? I'm going to navigate down to the 20th, and then come down and set a time. I'm going to set this follow-up call for 10 a.m., and then I have the option to repeat this task. And remember, you can easily use Google Tasks to organize and manage either your business or personal tasks. Now, if you're adding a repeat task, this could be an activity that you do on a consistent and regular basis, say every week or every month on the same date and time, then you can go ahead and add those details. For example, this task could repeat every one day or every one month, week or year. You can simply set the time. Then if we come down, again, we can change the start date and we can choose if this reoccurring task has an end date. Okay, so because this task is just a follow-up call, I'm going to navigate down and click on cancel. This is not a reoccurring task. Now I can also create more macro tasks that have subtasks within that task. For example, if we navigate up to add a new task, and for the purpose of this task, I'm going to add web design client A. Then for details, I'm going to add new one page web design project. Then I'll go ahead and quickly add a date and time. And this task, this project needs to be completed by the 28th. And I'm not going to set a time, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on OK. Now I can navigate up to these three dots next to this task that I just created and click here and then go ahead and add a subtask. Now this subtask is going to be called Logo Design. And again, I can add these details to this subtask, but for now, what I'm gonna do is navigate back up to the Web Design Client A, click on these three dots and add a second subtask. And this task is all about adding features. And again, I can add the details to this subtask. I'm going to click out of here. And as you can see, under this parent task, we have two subtasks. Now, if we navigate over to these three dots next to the subtask, I can choose to unindent that subtask. If I do that, that subtask then becomes its own task. But what I'm gonna do is navigate back over here and then go ahead and click on indent again because I want this to be a subtask of this macro task up here, this parent task. Again, if I click on these three dots, I can delete this subtask and I can also create a new list and add the subtask to that new list. You can see that this subtask is currently under my tasks. Now, what we can also do is navigate up to my tasks and as you can see, we only have one list, my tasks. What we can do is create a new list to manage our tasks. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create new list and then call this follow up and then navigate down and click on done. Now, as you can see within this task list, we currently have zero tasks. However, what I can do is navigate back up to the task list, then navigate down to my tasks. And then as you can see, we have this follow up task here. I'm gonna navigate over to these three dots and then come down and click on follow up. And that's gonna add that task to the follow up task list. And as you can see, if I navigate back up to my tasks and then click on follow up, you can see we now have one task under follow up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is navigate back over to my tasks and let's say I go ahead and I complete 
this subtask here. That's going to add that subtask to my completed tasks. And you can find your completed tasks down below here. And under the completed tasks, you have the option to uncomplete these tasks, or you can go ahead and delete these completed tasks. This is if you want to tidy up this area and you do not need to see your previous completed tasks. Okay, so I'm gonna close this and then navigate up to this web design client a task and then click on these three dots. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new list. And this is going to be called web design projects. And this is going to be a task list for all my web design projects. And as you can see, that's going to move that web design client a task and its subtasks into my new task list. If we navigate up to my tasks, you can now see we have zero tasks. However, if I click here and then navigate down to my design projects, you can now see the primary task and the subtask down here. Now you can also start each of your tasks. And then if we navigate up to our task list, and click on start, you can see all your starred tasks. You can also go ahead and add a starred task. Now you can also add emails to your tasks. For example, if we navigate up to start and then navigate down to the follow up list. And what I wanna do is navigate over to my primary inbox. And let's say this email was from a potential client. Then what I can do is drag this conversation and add that into the right hand side. And that's going to automatically add this new task associated to that email. If I click on this email, that's going to open up this attached email. We can then go through and edit the task details. Now, if we navigate up to list options, these three dots next to add a new task within a task list and click here, and then you can come down and sort your task list by my order, date, and start recently. Below this, we can rename the list, delete the list, and we can print the list if we like. Now, if you've completed any of those tasks within this task list, you have the option to delete all completed tasks. Now, if you've set up any reminders, you can also move reminders to your tasks. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this and then click on my Google Calendar up here. And all your tasks that have an attached date will show up in your Google Calendar. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up my Google Calendar. And you can see my tasks that I need to complete, Web Design Client A, and if we navigate down here, you can see that we have that task inside our calendar. We can click on that task, and then we have the option inside our calendar to edit this task, delete the task, or mark the task as complete. Now, Google Tasks is very similar to Google Keep, and you don't really need to use both applications. I find Google Tasks is more effective if you're just looking for simple day-to-day -day task management. However, if you're looking for a Google application that also allows you to create task lists and more, then I suggest you check out Google Keep. What I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description, which will help you get started with Google Keep. Okay, so as you can see, Google Tasks integrates with all your different Google apps, making it easy to manage all your tasks and activities related to either your personal life or your business activities. Okay, so now let's take a look at the mobile app. Now, Google Tasks does not have a standalone web app or web version. However, in saying that, you can download Google Tasks onto your mobile device through Android or iOS. So as you can see, I've got Google Tasks on my iOS device. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Google Tasks. And as you can see, up above you have your task lists. Now, if I navigate over to the left-hand side, you can see our starred tasks. If I click on my tasks, I can see my tasks. I can also see all my completed tasks. And then next to that, we have the follow-up task list that I created, as well as the tasks inside this task list. And then next to that, we have our web design projects tasks with subtasks. And I also have the option to create a new task list. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate back. Now at any time you can delete and rename any of your task lists. As you can see, it's a very simple and easy to use interface. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate over to my web design projects task list. And as you can see, I have one task with a subtask that is starred. If we navigate down to the hamburger icon down in the left hand corner, you can simply navigate through all your lists and you can also create a new list. Okay, so let's exit out of that. If we navigate down to this plus icon, this is where we can create a new task. Okay, so let's come out of that. And then down in the bottom right hand corner, if we click here, we can simply manage how we view our list and we can also rename and then delete our list. So as you can see, Google Tasks is a very simple yet agile and intuitive Google app for managing your tasks. Again, anyone can access Google Tasks. All you need is a Google account. 
However, that is how you can get started with Google Tasks. And there we have it guys, that is it for this complete Google Tasks app tutorial for beginners. Now if you have any questions about Google Tasks, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.